Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video. Well, the time has now arrived to replace the stock tires on the Bolt EV. I have a little over 60,000 miles on it now, about 61 and a half, maybe 62,000 miles. There's still some uh, tread left on the tires, but at this point I'm just going to go ahead and replace them and I don't really want to have to deal with any sort of winter or wet weather uh, with the tread depth as low as it is. I might end up keeping one or two of them to use as spares. Uh, as you might already know, I went ahead and replaced the stock rims with the Cruise Eco rims, which are about five pounds lighter per rim. All right, and a drum roll as to what tires I'm going to be replacing these with. I decided to go ahead and replace them with the original energy savers for the Chevy Volt, the ones without the goop inside the uh, inside the tire lining. Now there are a couple of reasons why I went ahead and changed out the tires for uh, the Volt tires. One of them has to do with the goop itself. Um, it's hard to repair and for me, especially since the Bolt EV doesn't really have space for a spare, I keep a repair kit on me. And with the goop, it makes it a little bit more difficult to do self repairs. The other reason is uh, they're a bit lighter. So when I weighed out these tires, they were 21 pounds. When I weighed out the stock Bolt EV LT rims, they were 23 pounds. The original total wheel weight for the Bolt EV's wheels were 45 and a half pounds. So that means that the stock Bolt EV tires are actually about a pound to a pound and a half heavier than the Volt tires. So I'll be saving another pound to pound and a half per corner by making this trade. So to in total, I've reduced the uh, weight per corner of the Bolt EV by about six to six and a half pounds. Being low rolling resistance tires, I shouldn't lose too much in terms of the uh, efficiency that I see normally. These are very similar tires to the stock Bolt EV tires, only lighter without the self-sealing. So I expect to see very similar, if not uh, better, ranges. It should be uh, faster turn-in times too, which you know were already helped by going to a lighter rim. Going over mountains, acceleration, all of that should be enhanced a little bit. Now, I know some of you might wonder, well, why would you go with a tire that people have complained about in terms of traction and grip and things of that nature? I think part of it is just being honest with how and why I'm using the Bolt EV. Right now, it's primarily a long-distance car and a commuter car. I don't need... Uh, track level grip that you'd get from stickier rubber and I really don't need to be re replacing my tires every 20 to 30,000 miles. Also because I'm in California um, our weather isn't as bad but even in the places where it is bad California makes you put on traction devices anytime the weather gets bad enough unless you have an all-wheel drive car. So even if I had dedicated winter tires for winter I would still need to use some sort of chain or traction device. And that means that I'm really not compelled to have a set of dedicated winter tires, which if I did that, then I would be more inclined to have a much grippier dedicated set of summer tires. So, so given that, I'm just going to have one set of tires. It's better for me to just use the stock tire configuration so I don't really need to worry about switching out tires throughout the year. Uh, if I go someplace that needs chains or traction devices, I'm just going to have to pony up and get those anyway. And of course, if I decide to take the Bolt EV to a track, a rally cross, some sort of an event, I'm more than likely going to get a dedicated set of rims and tires for that purpose. Now, I'm about to head out to uh, go put these on. I'm only going to be able to put about 40 to 50 miles onto them right after uh, they're installed, so I won't get a great driving impression of it. Based on that, I'm not going to really have a good gauge of what to expect from these tires, probably until after I finish my 500-mile leg returning 
back to Southern California. So there you have it. And of course, this is the uh, spillover into the cabin. So I put down the, the short seat and uh, left the uh, seat belt on there, but we were able to fit it behind the driver's seat. A lot of passenger leg room in the rear, so there's plenty of plenty of space, and hopefully this leaves enough room in the back for one adult and one rather small dog. Come on, Simpson. Let's go.